Hello. Let's talk about Malachi today. Normally we just do Malachi 3.10, but today we're going to do Malachi 3, 8 through 12. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Tithing, you know, people say uh, tithing is an Old Testament thing. It's not mentioned in the New Testament. Well, tithing is actually an act of worship, and it's as old as Abraham. He gave tithes to Melchizedek, acknowledging that Melchizedek was priest of God Most High, king of Salem. Jacob himself had vowed to tithe to God, and both of these individuals predated Moses. So when Moses incorporated tithing into the law, yes, that made it an Old Testament thing, but since Jacob and Abraham predated that law, tithing is actually a biblical thing and not an Old Testament, not a New Testament thing. So let's look at Tithing, then, as biblical, not old or new. It's biblical. So over the centuries, though, uh, the Pharisees had warped many teachings of the law, and tithing was one of the things that they had warped. They, they bent a lot of things. One of these days, uh, get out your Bible dictionary, go online and search, and see what they do with Corban. And uh, you'll find out that they, they really mess things up, as usual. But, you know, since God owns everything, he made everything, he doesn't need anything that we can bring him. But when we obey his word and bring him gifts as an act of worship, and we do it with grateful hearts, it pleases him. And that's what our attitude is supposed to be, something that pleases God. Well, the people of Israel were robbing God by not bringing tithes and offerings. And in doing that, they weren't fulfilling the covenant they had made with him. And so he couldn't fulfill his part of that covenant either. And whenever we rob God, we're actually robbing ourselves. To begin with, when we don't do these things, we're robbing ourselves of the spiritual blessing that God can give us. A spiritual blessing always accompanies obedience and always accompanies faithful uh, giving. But even more, this money that we're trying to keep, these material things that we're trying to keep, they rightfully belong to God anyway, since he made everything. What happens to the money when you try to keep it? You think you've got a nice cushion in your bank account. Unexpected doctor bills. Tax collector shows up. You know, somebody hits your car. Can't keep it, can you? But if we trust in God, God gives us blessings beyond what we could ever imagine. Yes, giving is an act of faith, but God rewards faith. God rewards faith. Can't tell you that enough. The promise of Malachi 3.10 was linked to the covenant that the people of Israel had made with God. And if they had faithfully obeyed him, he would have faithfully kept his promise. But the spiritual principle behind that promise in Malachi 3.10 was echoed by Jesus in the sixth chapter of Luke. And it's also echoed by Paul in the ninth chapter of 2 Corinthians. We Christians can grab a hold of that promise today. We need to 
grab a hold of that promise today for the spiritual blessings that come from doing that. One of the sad realities of failure to give the tithe or to give generously is that not only are we guilty of robbing God, as he said here in this opening verse of Malachi, but we're robbing ourselves of the joy of giving and of the blessings that follow from it. Just ask anybody who offers tithes, who gives tithes and offerings on a regular basis, and ask them about the spiritual blessings that flow from that. You just don't know what you're missing, okay? I, I don't know what else I can tell you about these things, except you have to trust me on that. Or better yet, don't trust me, trust God. You can't trust anybody better than that. Have you tested him? Have you trusted him? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for how you've blessed us and how you're going to bless us. More importantly, we thank you for how you've already given the best gift that could ever be given, the gift of Jesus who died for us. And we thank you so much for that. And it's through his most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed day.